Hi, CJ here. Ernest Hemingway tells a story about a father who desperately wanted to reconcile with his son. Regretting what had happened between them, the father put an ad in the local newspaper that read, Dear Paco, meet me in front of the Madrid newspaper office tomorrow at noon. All is forgiven. I love you. Hemingway writes that the next day at noon, hundreds of Pacos gathered in front of the newspaper office, searching, hoping, seeking forgiveness. In today's edition of Life Notes, forgiving yourself and others. This world is full of heartbroken people. People who have been victimized, mistreated, alienated, and neglected. The world is also full of people who are angry, resentful, bitter, lonely, depressed, fearful, guilt-ridden, consumed by hatred and self-pity. People who have been wronged by others and people who have wronged others. This life is unfair and full of hurt and we have only two options. To live bitter or better. Painful experiences create painful memories, and a painful memory is a mental wound that must be healed. Life is too short to be imprisoned by an emotional scrapbook of painful memories. We must forgive. You might need to forgive someone, or you might need to forgive yourself. Ty Gibson, an uh, inspiring writer and speaker, describes forgiveness this way, and I quote, Forgiveness is the decision to cease holding a person's offense against them to their hurt, but rather to act in their best interest by turning them over to God, which may involve receiving them back into trust or cutting them off from trust as the nature of the, def- of the offense sorry, dictates. End quote. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. It is the refusal to be imprisoned by toxic emotions that can stay in our hearts based on a past offense. In other words, it's a decision to not allow what happened in our past to sabotage our future, to not allow painful events to have a tyrannical grasp on our mind and body. Number one, forgiveness is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. Number two, forgiveness is not a feeling, but an act of the will. Number three, forgiveness is not an excuse for that behavior, but a decision to not be emotionally controlled or affected by the behavior. And fourthly, forgiveness is not trust. Forgiveness is a grace gift you give to yourself. Trust is earned by those who are trustworthy. Some may never f- never uh, seek forgiveness, and uh, some do only because they are caught. And of course, there are others uh, who do because they come face to face with their wrong, and they are truly remorseful and desire to turn away from that wrong forever. Either way, consequences are bound to the choice. Forgiveness is not restoration. It lays the foundation for restoration. This means that although one is forgiven, one may still have to suffer the harsh consequences of their actions. I can forgive you and still call the police on you. Forgiveness is not a license to live as you wish, but rather it is a gift that sets you free to live the way you should. Living better and not bitter also includes forgiving yourself. This world is a university of hard knocks and we owe it to life not to get bitter. Bitterness shrivels the spirit and hardens our attitudes, but choosing to live better, choosing to learn from our troubles and difficulties and disappointments, well, that helps us grow and gives us insight, understanding, and new direction for our lives. I know it can be difficult, but learning to forgive yourself means you will have less anxiety and depression and a higher self-esteem. Forgiveness opens the heart and helps us grow mentally, spiritually, and socially. 
I've got three questions for you. Are you holding on to bitterness? If so, why? Are there people you need to forgive today? Do you need to forgive yourself? Remember, today is a good day to live better, not bitter.